All right, welcome to today's video. Hopefully you're all having amazing creative days and you're here to learn about the EOS R5 and how to set up Rack Focus. That's what we're gonna be talking about today. And if you don't know, I'm gonna talk a little more about what Rack Focus is, but basically it's the, the speed at which you focus between two points to generate emotion or mood or emphasize something in a, in a video, but we'll talk about that. But the main thing for today is I'm gonna show you how to set up Rack Focus on the EOS R5, how to set up the speed at which your camera rack focuses, and we'll talk about some scenarios where different speeds of rack focus make sense. And if you're wondering about all this halation, I am trying out a Tiffin Black Pro Mist one half filter. So if you're curious, this is what it looks like. It's really kind of like hazy. So yeah, that's that. Let's uh, let's rack it up. All right, so first things first, I'm gonna set up the camera and show you guys how to set up the rack focus speeds and where all that information is on the R5 menu. And for the uh, demonstration, we are gonna be using the 85 1.2 and uh, it has a nice razor thin depth of field. So I think it'll demonstrate what rack focus is and the speed at which the camera can rack focus. So uh, yeah, that's the plan. Let's put the camera and the lens together. All right, so now we're looking at the back of the R5 and let's set up the autofocus speed. Now, if you're using a different camera other than an R5, if you're using a Fuji, a Sony, Lumix, they probably have something similar in their menu. So you could apply this knowledge to uh, any camera system. So we're gonna hit the menu button over here and we are gonna go to uh, autofocus and autofocus tab three. And here you'll see movie servo AF speed. That's what we're looking for. So hit the set button, get in there and scroll one wheel down and you have AF speed, AF being autofocus. So we hit the set button to get in there and right now it's set to standard and I'll show you what standard looks like. So here we're gonna focus on this Canon AE-1 and then here we have a Yashica, I think Electro 35 film camera. These are both film cameras. So that's standard and this AE-1 was actually the first camera I ever owned that was mine. So there we go, that is standard. So now let's go back into the menu, set AF speed, and let's go to the fastest setting it has, and let's see how much faster this is. So these two cameras are about, let's say five feet apart. We'll focus on the background, foreground. Oh, it's struggling there a little bit. There we go. So that's relatively quick. Now let's go to a slower setting, set AF speed, and let's take it minus three. Let's see what that looks like. So let's focus on the AE1. And you can see that's a lot slower. So if you want a nice smooth rack focus, there you go, that's what minus three looks like. Now let's go even slower. We're gonna take it all the way to minus seven doubt anyone would ever use this, but let's go for it. That is super slow, super slow focus. But if you ever need minus seven, there you go. That's how you uh, get a nice smooth focus from A to B, or if you're in the videography world, that's how you get a nice smooth rack focus. All right, before we pop out of here, let me pop into the menu one more time and show you two more things you might find useful. And the first one is movie servo autofocus tracking sensitivity. So here we go. If you want the camera to lock on to your subject matter and track only that, you wanna switch this over to locked on. If you want the camera to focus on whatever pops up in front of it, then switch to responsive. So let's say for example, you're shooting a quarterback on the field and you want the camera only to lock onto the quarterback and try its best to stay locked onto that. You wanna to go to locked on. If you wanna lock on to whatever's in front or closer, you will go to responsive. So another way to use responsive is if you're doing product reviews and you're talking in front of the camera and you wanna put a product up in front of your face and you want the camera to focus on the product instead of you, you would put it on responsive. If you want it to stay locked onto your face, even if you put the product in front of the camera, locked on so there you go that's pretty useful if you're making uh youtube videos or any other kind of videos now the other thing too is this switching tracking tracked subjects and it's pretty much the same thing and you have initial priority which is track the person or the thing that you initially clicked on and easily switch subjects makes it more responsive and here we go if you want to read that you can give it a pause it 
I guess you can enhance the stickiness of the tracking mode with this setting if you're using these focus modes. All right, and that's that. And the nice thing with, uh, with these Canon menus is they're really in depth. So if you wanna pause, you can read this too. All right, so now that you know how to set up the focus speed on your camera, the question is when do you use which focus speed and you know, wh when is it beneficial to go slow and why would you even wanna go slow? Why would you wanna go fast? So let's talk about two scenarios right here. Let's say you're filming some kind of movie and there's a dramatic thing happening. Let's say there's a car crash and your superhero just saved the person from the burning car and they're walking away from the car down the street and you got a nice like, you got the rule of thirds, you got the lines, yellow lines of the, the road leading up to the car and the car's in the distance and it's burning and your hero's walking away with the, the person in their hand. So what you can do is a nice slow rack focus starting at the burning car and then the camera will slowly rack focus down the road to your superhero who's holding or the person that they saved. And that slow rack focus kind of emphasizes the drama of the moment, right? It's like near death experience, save the life, you know, you've got a nice composition because if you went from the car directly to the superhero, boom, 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 it would kind of lose that kind of that, that emotional feel. So depending on the story you're trying to tell as a filmmaker, you want to use slow or fast rack focus. So another thing too, is when you focus slowly from point A to point B, you're kind of really, really emphasizing to the viewer that this is what the story is. This is a this is B, there's nothing, no confusion in between, right? And now if you wanna do fast rack focus, the situation where that might come in handy is, let's say you're shooting a documentary about a basketball player and you'd basketball players on the court, you know, dribbling the ball, running around, shooting, and it's very like fast action, high pace, you know, anything like that. Because in those fast action, dramatic sports things, you wanna show the nature of the sport being fast and you have to be in the moment. So that's a good time to use fast rack focus. So depending on what you're shooting and what you wanna do, you know, you can figure that out. You know, if you're just shooting an interview, it doesn't really matter. But if you're shooting any kind of action or movement or you wanna use focus to emphasize the emotion or the story that you're trying to tell, now you know how to do it. So there you go. Now you can be a better filmmaker using rack focus. All right, and in the interests of testing out this Pro Mist one half filter, Let's put this uh, soft box behind me. Curious to see what this footage looks like. This is all zebra stripe, so it's all blown out. And then hopefully the light kind of wraps around. But anyway, uh, I'm just experimenting because I'm always curious about lighting. And uh, yeah, so if you want to follow me on social media, Twitter, Instagram right there, give me a follow. I'm pretty active on the socials. If you want to reach out to me, if you have any questions, reach out to me on Twitter or leave comments down below. Would uh, really appreciate that. And with that being said, this video is over. Thanks for watching. Peace out. Hopefully you learned something and you've all become better filmmakers as a result. <laughs> I'll see you guys in the next video.